Today on Learning Firearms, we are having an after-action review interview spectacular with Dave Spaulding. Hard to believe that's me. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Dave Tim from the Learning Firearms Channel, and with me is Dave Spaulding from Handgun Combatives. And we just wrapped up his enhanced combative pistol course in the Brainerd area, and it I have to say, if I had to change one thing about enhanced combative pistol would be the name, and it's just a whole lot of moving and shooting <laughs> is what I would call the course. Right. It was a hard two days. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a challenge. There was uh, shooting drills that I've never seen before. There was a ton of movement and a ton of explanation of movement that I've never seen before uh, in a very unique and good way that yeah. I think a lot of shooters that were at the course have not seen as well. I mean, so often we're taught just to move and shoot, but to actually explain some of that movement with purpose. So enough of me yakking, Dave. How did you kind of develop this obviously tremendous amount of experience that you're bringing to the table with movement and the use of a handgun. I'm, I'm just blown away, so I'll just let you take it away. Well, obviously what I deal with is uh, I deal with the combative application of the pistol. Uh, I don't teach carbine classes. Uh, quite frankly, if you want to take a carbine class, you take that from a former military guy. But I strongly believe that when it comes to dealing with the handgun, you take that from a law enforcement officer because that's what we do. And that's their primary weapon. Every day in the United States, probably between five and ten Police officers are involved in either a shooting or a gunfight with a handgun, and that just doesn't happen in the military, even within the special operations community. So I have literally been studying armed conflict, primarily with handguns, since about 1976. A lot of years. And a lot of years, and a lot of people I've interviewed, plus, you know, my own police experience, because I have, a, I had 30 plus years. I was out there every day carrying a gun, you know, every day, you know, facing unknown threats. I had a wide range of experiences. Not only did I work in the jail, I worked patrol, I worked undercover, I worked SWAT, a lot of time with a handgun. And I had some situations that were kind of hairy with a handgun. So, you know, combine those with my interviews, with my training, and it's made me realize that the handgun's a very specific tool. And that when it comes down to your question about movement with purpose, you know, quite often we get that situation with, you know, in a fight, you always move, you always move. Well, what's that mean? Yeah. Do I stand there and vibrate? I mean, what's that mean to move? Right. So what I've tried to do in Enhanced Combative Pistol is I've tried to make people understand not only when to move, but how to move. How do you get off the line of attack? How do you move forward? How do you move to the rear? Actually give people tools so that they really know how to move. Because let's face it, Dave, if you're gonna take the time to understand and then anchor a particular skill, that's quite a commitment. Right. You need to understand that that's important to you. And I really hope that I conveyed that to your, uh, your clientele in, in Enhanced Combative Pistol. I think you did. The feedback that we had from class was amazing. And it was just so unique to have that different perspective. Now, one of the things you mentioned in class was that you have a background in track and field, that you actually were <laughs> a, a collegiate athlete on a track and field I went scholarship. on a track and field scholarship, and now, then I was a coach. Now that obviously brings a lot of unique perspective, aside from shooting, but let's mm -hmm. just say it, track and field, obviously a lot of movement in track mm -hmm. and field. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm not a track and field guy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm not so much anymore either, yeah. <laughs> but you have some very unique experience with that. Mm -hmm. And then when did you kind of figure out that, hey, all this stuff kind of works together. Well, the thing about track and field, especially the field events, yep. is that they're very technique oriented. And if you have good technique, you can take an athlete that maybe doesn't have as much natural ability and make them excel through good technique. And we're finding the same thing out about shooting. Yeah. And that's where I came up with the term physiological efficiency. Now, nowadays there's some other instructors out there taking basically the same concept and calling it biomechanical efficiency or kinesiology efficiency. But you know what, Dave? I didn't take a year-long course 
in sports biomechanics. I took a year-long course in sports physiology, and that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. It's basically the study of human movement, because if you want to be fast with a gun or you want to be a fast across the hurdles or whatever the case may be, yep. you try to eliminate unnecessary motion. So what we did in Enhanced Combative Pistol is we put a lot of movement with purpose, and we tried to eliminate those things that you didn't do, and most of that comes from track and field. Yeah. Well, it was a very unique perspective that I, for one, really appreciated because I, I played football and I wrestled. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the type of movement in those sports is far different than track and field. Right. And what I liked about what you brought to the table was you're explaining, you know, how to explode off the starting box, but then you would transfer that to, hey, if you were in a gunfight or a potentially violent situation and you need to move really rapidly, you need to explode. It's not just these James Bond, crisscrossing yeah, type yeah, fancy yeah. moves. So the way that you brought that in, I thought was really relevant and very realistic. And some of the drills, which we'll probably show some uh, footage, you know, as you're watching this, of some of those drills. But it was really, really an eye opener. I mean, the the drills that you had obviously had a purpose. Mm -hmm. They obviously were taken from your experience, and they obviously demonstrated, you know, for a lot of us shooters where our lack of skill set was, and then how to improve that, right. you know, and how to demonstrate that. So. Really solid stuff, right. really solid stuff. Well, if you think about movement with purpose, I mean, it's yep. very, very common in pistol craft to teach to take a lateral step on yeah. the draw stroke. And that's great, but that's just the training wheels. That's yep. the tricycle. You know, taking a single lateral step offline, that's not gonna keep you from getting shot. Right. You know, that's just the beginning of it. As a matter of fact, there can be an argument made for not moving at all. And, right. and I told you the story about Wyatt Earp at the OK Corral. Morgan and, uh, and Virgil and Doc Holliday, they were all shot. All of the cowboys were shot. The only person that wasn't shot in that, in that event was Wyatt Earp. And because multiple witnesses said that he stood stock still when he shot, hmm. and that's the reason he didn't get hit. He didn't move into the path of a bullet. Now, am I saying you shouldn't move? <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that movement needs to be with purpose. And if you move, it's got to be dynamic. It's got to be explosive. It's got to be now. You've got to be standing here. When you draw your pistol, you've got to suddenly be gone. Right. And you've got to move far enough that you can bring your gun into the fight. Otherwise, why stop? Yeah. Or Keep why, moving. Yeah, yeah. Keep moving. Yep. So what I tried to explain to your client, your your, your folks, your clientele, <laughs> the folks your you, folks the too. folks that you brought to the class, was how to do that. Yeah. It's not just move. How do I move? Yeah. How do I move explosively? And then when I do move, how do I come to a stop quickly and deliver accurate shots to the target? And we're not just talking about accurate shots. As you know from the class, we were delivering three, four, or five rounds. Right. to a three by five card. Which is a really small target. Yeah, at absolutely. 25 yards in yeah. some of the move back <laughs> drills. Mm -hmm. uh, and now some of the moving drills were obviously a little closer, but there was a definite high demand for accuracy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all in all, I mean, I loved the drills, the, especially the movement stuff. No other class that I've been to addresses movement the way that you have addressed it. So kudos to you and obviously the well-developed <laughs> curriculum. Well, I've given a lot of thought to movement, not just move. How do you move? Right. I mean, because again, if you're going to take the time to learn and anchor a skill into your skill sets, that's quite a commitment because you've Absolutely. got to really concentrate on that. And if you're going to do it, you need to understand that it's important to you. So for me, I need to make that verbally, visually descriptive. I need to get it across to you so that you know it's important to you to take the time to anchor this skill. And I hope I did that for your folks. I would agree. Um, all the feedback that I've gotten was extremely positive in that regard. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about movement, and the reason why we spent uh, a, a significant amount of time talking on movement is movement was a large, significant component of this course. And like I said, if I could change the name, it would be moving well, a lot. Movement was everything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, shift gears a little bit, since this is kind of our after-class review. Mm -hmm. Equipment, you know, we had uh, 20 shooters total, including right. Mike and myself for the right. most. And we had all but four Glocks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we had that's, 16 Glocks, That's typical, yeah. Two VP9s, a SIG, and a 1911. Right. And let's talk about gear for a little bit. Right. Um, again, we don't have to keep it to just guns, but what kind of gear issues did you see, or was there anything that you would recommend for changes? And I know I changed my belt out after mm -hmm. the first moving drills because the mm -hmm. belt I was wearing, quite frankly, 
just didn't work well for movement. Mm -hmm. um, it was a more of a, a tactical type belt, and I had um, an IFAC on there, my mags, a dump pouch, and it would just move around too much right. to move it where I'd have to be holding it, and it just wasn't optimal. So I right. swapped out to an instructor type belt, holster, and mag pouches, and it worked far better. Right. And in, in hindsight, I wish I just would have brought my duty belt, you know, from work. Well, my, I wrote, Mike, I'm sorry, that's your partner. <laughs> it is. Dave, I think the thing that I could tell you and, and, the, and the viewers here is go lean. Yep. Go with what you need to do. And that's so often. We want to chunk on all of this stuff. We want to have an IFAC. We want to have a, a, a thigh holster. We want to have 14 magazines and all that kind of stuff. But think about what is your real world of work and go from there. The thing about the class here is that everybody had thought out their gear pretty well. They showed up holsters that they worked with, their magazine pouches. You know, maybe they should have had something a little bit different. But for the most part, it was well thought out, and they ran their guns really well. Yeah. They just didn't shoot them. They ran the guns really well. Yeah. But I guess what I would tell to your viewers is that really give some thought to your gear. What do you need in the way of a holster? Don't pick the holster that's popular. Pick the holster that works for you in your real world of work. I'm not a big believer for law enforcement officers in having, you know, triple, quadruple, 17 levels of retention. Mm -hmm. Most of the years that I was on the street as a cop, we had thumb brake holsters. And you know, if somebody grabbed your gun, what you did is you trapped their hand and you smacked them in the face. Now we rely way too much on all kinds of levels of gear. I like that Safari Land ALS where you basically just, you know, pull that little lever we out of the way. a lot of guys running that. And then it works great and your hand goes right to it. Guys were using it for duty. They were using it for concealment. We had some thigh rigs with that. Yeah. And that's just a super choice. But the fact of the matter is for most armed citizens, they just need a scabbard. Okay. They just need a scabbard. I don't care if it's leather. I don't care if it's kydex, but just a scabbard. But more importantly, they need to position it well. You'll see a, a student or a shooter that'll have an FBI cant on it and they'll try to wear it right on the side of their body. Well, you know, you can't get there from right. here. The FBI cant was made for It needs to be back. back around over your hip, you know, yep. because the suit coats of the 60s, you know, the 50s and 60s were draped from the shoulders. So you wore it back here. I tend to wear my, you know, my gun right here on the side of my body, okay. what's called three o'clock. And so I want it to be an optimal position. So when I draw, I want it to be very, very minimal. I want it to retain the gun. I want it to be very lightweight because I got a Glock 19 that's got 15, 16 rounds in it. That's already heavy enough. Sure. Why do I want a big heavy holster or why do I want a holster that takes up half my body in real estate? I don't want that. I want my magazine pouches to cover no more than half of the magazine so I can get my hand on them and I can get them in the gun. Many duty pouches choke way up to the top of the magazine, and, and then they, flap they put a friggin' yeah. flap over top of it. Yeah. So now I'm pulling the flap, and I'm grabbing a hold of it like this. Yep. So give some thought to your gear. If you give critical thought to your gear, it's going to maximize your performance, and you're never going to be sorry that you did. Great advice. Now, we mentioned some shooters. Uh, there was 20 shooters total. Mm -hmm. We had several LE. Right. We had some business owners. We right. had an emergency manager. Uh, we had a few doctors mm -hmm. we had uh you know just general you know regular guys too mm -hmm. so we had a, a really good variety mm -hmm. and I, i'm not trying to brag but i think we had some really good shooters oh you you had 20 excellent combat shooters cool. they weren't usbsa grandmasters but i don't care about that yeah. they were people that were capable of defending their own lives with a handgun and if you remember i kept saying look at your targets yeah. Did you shoot well enough to save your own life? And what they did is they came back and they looked at me and said, you know what, Dave, I think I did. Boom, that's what I want. And you had 20 people that could do that. Yeah, we were very fortunate. We mm -hmm. had a really awesome class. The amount of diversity, we had some experience. Uh, and I learned from my own experience is that I, I enjoy competitive shooting. It's a recreation for me. I do take some skills Absolutely, from it, but absolutely. But I also found some training scars, particularly in the box drill. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that you were really hammering was you know stop and make your hit and i'm so used to the competitive shooting environment where it's like no take the risk of moving and shooting to get that time down mm -hmm. but then if you miss obviously you can't make up a miss fast enough in a gunfight right and uh it, so it, it was really cool to see some of the other students diversity and their experience too so i think we had an outstanding group right you uh, did all around. We, it was it was, it was especially awesome. the canadian guys those are always those guys, guys were a hoot yes they were but you know back to your your comment about you know trying to move and hit 
And if you miss the plate, you keep hammering away. Well, keep in mind that in a gunfight, people are shooting back at you. Mm -hmm. If you give up that first hit, you give your opponent the opportunity for first hit. So I'd much rather you plant, shoot, get that first hit, then move on. And because that kind of goes back to why you're at Earth. Every, yeah. every round you fire, you're adding a quarter second, third of a second, half of a second, whatever that may be, to getting back on target and that may be just enough for them to tag you. So compete, absolutely compete, but don't confuse competition with combat because nobody's shooting back at you. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Now, uh, in a part of our after action, I always like to talk a little bit about weather. We had some decent weather the first day. Weather was outstanding. Partly cloudy, but mm -hmm. mostly sunny. Today mm -hmm. was real sunny. We right. had some real good weather. Uh, obviously with the heat, we want to make sure people stay hydrated and I think mm -hmm. they did a really good job. I don't think mm -hmm. we had any heat issues or anything No, like we that. did not. It was good. Matter of fact, a little, an overcast day is great yeah. because that keeps the sun from beating down on you. I would say we had just about optimal weather. We really yeah. did. It worked out well, considering the fact we could have all been drenched. <laughs> very yeah. true. Right. Well, there's some storms probably brewing in tonight. That's right. So I think we missed it. And mm -hmm. We had some very severe weather just before the course mm -hmm. as well. So I guess uh, in, in this after action review, I have some thoughts that uh, I'd like to share about the course overall, but I wanted to get your thoughts first as okay. what you would either say to the students who participated in this course, what your th closing thoughts were, and then um, maybe just a little bit about courses in general. And we'll folks do a separate video with Dave on kind of some training overview, how to prepare, what kind of a Q&A, if you will. So right. we'll have a separate video okay. on that. So don't, okay. uh, uh, don't worry, guys. We're going to cover some of that stuff, too, that you're probably asking. This is mainly focused on the course that we did. But, uh, yeah, so I guess with that, you know, what would you like to close with in regards to the course? I'd like to close. If I'm, if I'm talking to the students we had in the class, I would sure. say, first of all, thank you very much for showing up. Thank you so much for giving me 100% because they absolutely did. And I would say thank you for taking the time to really care about yourself. They were a good group of shooters. They worked very hard. I would really have no critique for them at all because, you know, I felt like they gave me everything they could. They took my suggestions. They made changes. They were really open-minded. I didn't get a single student that was giving me, you know, <laughs> one of these, you know, one of these things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for that, I'm very, very grateful because if you get a group of students like that, it's, it's just outstanding. So if you're watching this, you guys did terrific. Awesome. And I would echo that. We had a great group, and I thank all of the students that attended because without you, we can't host these courses. We can't have these tremendous instructors in our area, which we really enjoy as well. And all the emails that we sent out, Mike and I always sign that we look forward to training with you because mm -hmm. we were right there with them. And that's what we do. We don't yeah. train. We, we train with them. We don't train down to them. We don't train at them. Exactly. We train with them because you know what? As you saw, when we're doing these drills and stuff, I like to shoot them too. Yeah, and I you like. Shoot them very I, well. I, I like to do. I, you know, hey, I, I'm 60 years old. You know, I'm trying to keep up with you young guys, but to me, it's really important that you do that because if if I can do it at my age, you can do it at your age. Yeah. So to me, that's really important, and I think it also adds a certain camaraderie yep. because we train together. What? Oh! 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 You pulled that off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's get on to the next the next uh, drill. It's not something I'm talking down to you. You know the instructors that like to talk down to them and think they're some kind of a special person. I got news for them. Unless you can put your pants on both legs at the same time, you're not that impressive. So you know that that would impress me. Otherwise, you know that's the challenge. They're just another instructor. All Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess, guys, I will close with this. Number one, again, I wanted to thank you. Without the students that come to these courses, we can't make them happen. I want to thank you for coming to our area. It was our privilege and honor to host you. It was oh, a tremendous thank you. course. Thank you My very much. My first time training with you, and thank it you. definitely won't be the last. And uh, I'll add to this. Uh, what we see as a host is you know, kind of both sides. We work with you, we work with the students, mm -hmm. and then we also get to participate in the class, and there's some behind-the-scenes stuff that goes on. And I have to say... And I'm not just saying this because he's standing here, but our experience as hosts, as well as students with Dave, was absolutely phenomenal. The communication was excellent. Uh, he was on time. Classes were prepared. We never got any vibe that uh, he didn't have his crap together, just to put it bluntly. When he showed up, you knew that it was ready, and he had a lot of experience behind the subject matter. It was not just canned things or uh, stuff that he took from other people. And... 
when he did use a drill that was acquired from someone else, he gave credit, which to me as an instructor shows a lot of honor because I see a lot of instructors will say, yep, we're going to shoot this, this is my drill, whatever. Well, so-and-so came up with that or so-and-so developed this or whatever. So he gave a lot of credit. He had some of his own original stuff, which was really awesome. And all in all, the, the teaching ratio was really, really good. He ran two relays of 10 and he gave each student some one-on-one -on -one time, not only critiquing them while they're shooting, but then also looking at the technical aspects of the target, critiquing and giving them feedback. So all in all, guys, I highly recommend training with Dave. Whether you come to one of our courses or wherever he is, as far as handgun combatives, which is the name of his company and the true focus of what he does, it was a phenomenal experience. And I've taken several handgun courses from some very big names in the training community, but your perspective on uh, the handgun and the movement in particular was unique to all of those courses. And I learned a lot in this course that I will take not only as a shooter, uh, a cop on the road who may have to use this to save someone's life for my own, a competitive shooter, a teacher, you know, there was a lot of knowledge that I could get. So if you guys are looking to take a course, definitely you're doing yourself some service by checking out his courses. All in all, we give it two thumbs up, and I know Mike has uh, high recommendations as well. So with that, we'll close with a sincere thank you, Dave. It was a, it was a hard two days of training. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge. Yeah. But ultimately, it was very enjoyable, and a lot of learning occurred. Well, you know, the biggest, the biggest hurdle is yet to come is for me to get this head after what you've just said <laughs> in your vehicle. So oh, well, thank, we'll make it thank you, thank you very much. All right, if you guys are interested in learning more about Dave's courses, please check out his webpage. We'll put a link in the description below. He's also on Facebook and YouTube. And again, the name of his company is Handgun Combatives. And as the name implies, they focus on the skill set of the handgun. So make sure to check that out. If you've liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Facebook. We have tons of videos, quick tips, episodes, reviews, training, all sorts of stuff that we think you as a shooter would be interested in. Whenever you're shooting, make sure you shoot safe. Always wear your eye and ear protection. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day. channels yep sounds real good are we good well let's I'll get see. here let's make sure because whoa yeah. is easy. that good is that good yeah, yeah. All, right, all right all right good deal okay all right okay now i i'm i'm concerned that this is not my good side which well, side is your good side i have no idea what my good side is i think this is your good side is this my good side you look pretty good all right, good deal i mean i'm better than this side better. really yep. really yep. Hold on. hey you have any words of wisdom from canada never eat spinach with a stranger yeah yeah that's all I got. Perfect. <laughs> 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 Good day and welcome to our single.